Today I'd like to talk a little bit about a, an unconventional method of tapping a hole called power tapping. Um, it's kind of a technique I learned from working in various job shops. It's, it's not something you'll find, you'll find taught in a uh, machine shop class or you won't find it in a textbook because it's, well, like I said, it's kind of unconventional. Uh, what it is basically is uh, just mounting a tap in a chuck, in a drill chuck tightening the chuck up to the, just enough, just tight enough to drive the tap without breaking it and then driving the tap into a hole under power okay and then you reverse the spindle and run it back out um, I like, I use it a lot and the reason I do is because if I drill a hole like this and I want to put a tap in it um, why not do it when it's all set up I mean it's on location um, it's in the mill, milling machine so the if I put a tap in the drill chuck, the tap's going to be perfectly perpendicular to the part. You don't have to worry about putting it in on an angle. You don't have to waste time taking it out and run it o running it over to a, uh, if you have a drill press set up for tapping or just doing it by hand or something like that. It's real quick. There are a few things you need to know about power tapping to keep it from ending badly. Uh, the first thing is you got to know what kind of tap to use. Uh, you can't use any old tap. You can't just use a, a Chinese import uh, hand tap or something like that. You have to have a, a good quality tap and it has to be sharp. And the, the type you use is called a, a spiral point tap. Okay, here's one here. I don't know if it's in focus or not. Um, most of them are two flute and if you look at the tip they kind of spiral on the tip. They have a little relief grinding uh, relief cut to make it make the tap uh, cut cleaner. And uh, they're high-speed steel, they're not carbon steel, and most of them are two flute. Uh, some of the bigger taps, like this one, here's a half 13. This is a spiral flute tap, but it's, it's three flutes. You can, you can get by with, with more than two flutes in larger holes because there's more chip clearance around them. If you try using a three or a four foot uh, tap in a smaller size, there's not enough room for the chips to escape and the tap will bind up and you won't be able to power tap with it. Um, so here I've drilled a hole here for a 5 16 24 tap so just let me just give a little demonstration on uh, on how it's done. All right, power tap. Basically, you forget the chuck key, okay? Just tighten it up by hand just a little bit. All right, the object is to uh, hold the tap just tight enough to drive it in the hole, but not so tight if if the tap binds up it breaks, okay? Um, First thing you need to remember when you're power tapping, first important tool you have to have is a pair of safety glasses, because we're tapping under power here, and if you screw up doing this, the tap's going to break badly, okay? And it's going to shatter, and it's going to, all kinds of pieces are going to fly around, so you want to make sure and have some glasses on, okay? And another thing you need is you got to have tapping fluid. Uh, for aluminum, like in this case, a piece of aluminum, I like to use WD-40. It's, it's my favorite tapping fluid for aluminum. Works great. It's cheap. Alright, so first thing, first thing we gotta do is slow the spindle down a bit. Just to give you some time to react. Make sure your stops are all clear so you've got plenty of travel. Basically, I'm just gonna start the tapping hole, let it feed in. When it's in deep enough, I'm gonna reverse the spindle and let it feed out. It's pretty simple. Alright, there's a tapped hole, just like that, okay? It's a lot easier than taking the thing out and doing it by hand. See, I just basically, I just tighten, I didn't use a chuck key, I just tighten that up a little bit by hand, okay? It's better to start out light. If the tap slips a little bit and won't drive it in, then you can tighten it up a little bit more. But start light and tighten it up if you have to. If you start too tight, obviously it's going gonna, it's gonna to break the tap if it binds up. Uh, let's see, let's try something a little bigger. All right, that was a 5 16 24. Let's try this half 13. Alright, let's see here. This one's gonna 
This one I'm going to use a chuck key on it because it's a bigger tap. It's going to take a little more torque to drive it. Slow her down again here. This one's going to go in faster because it's a coarser pitch, so I'm going to have to be ready to reverse it. Okay, you saw that slipped a little bit. Okay, that's just about what you want. All right, there's a half 13. All right, does it work for smaller ones, smaller taps? Yeah, it sure does. You have to be a little more careful because obviously they're going to break easier. Here's a 440. That's not the right. That's not the right size drill for a 440. All right, let's get the right size drill here. I grabbed a, a clearance drill, not a tap drill. So let's pop another hole in here. It's easiest to power tap in a through hole. You can do it in a uh, a blind hole, but you have to. You may have to take a couple passes at it. You may have to back it up, clear the chips, and go back in because obviously there's no place for the chips to go. All right, now we're doing a small tap. We're doing a 440 now, so I'm going to barely tighten the thing up. In fact, I'm just going to let the thing coast in here. You can see it slipping. All right, so that's a problem with a uh, small tap. It has such light torque on the chuck that sometimes when you back it out, it releases the, uh, the tap. The 440 is about as small as I like to go power tapping because, because for that reason, a lot of times the chuck will let loose. All right, so let's see, what about steel? You know, I'm doing it, doing it in aluminum. Aluminum's easy, right? How about steel? Is it working steel? Let's find out. Let's try this 5 16 24 a piece of steel. <clears throat> Get over the edge here so I don't waste a lot of my steel. WD 40 is not a good cutting fluid for steel, but it's handy, so we'll use it. For tapping in steel, I, I like to use Tap Magic. I have I have a gallon of the original Tap Magic, the old formula. It works, it works a lot better than the new stuff. But if you have a favorite tapping fluid that you like to use in steel, and that's that's what you should use it. So now we're we're doing it in steel, so we need a little more a little more torque. So I'm going to tighten it up a little bit more with the chuck key, and I like to use my tap magic sparingly here so let's kind of brush it on with a brush and see what happens all right that's power tapping in the mill okay you can do the same thing on a lathe um, I would recommend before you try it on a project get yourself a piece of scrap drill a bunch of holes in it and try power tapping because it does take a little little getting used to it takes a little technique you have to well first of all you have to be able to t reverse the spindle at the right time but you know I mean if you can walk and chew gum you can probably figure out how to do that um, that's about it oh one more thing not quite it um, I also like to uh, power tap with my uh, let's see here I like to power tap with my cordless drill, okay? You can do the same thing with a cordless drill. If, you have, if I have a lot of, lot of holes to do and I don't want to switch the tap out each time, sometimes I'll go ahead and I'll drill all the, uh, drill all the holes in the part and then I'll take it out of the chuck and finish it up, do all the, tap all the holes by hand with the, uh, the cordless drill saves a little time. Just give you a quick 
quick demo on how to do that. Okay, I don't let, and then when I do it with a hand drill, I don't care about it slipping because I have lots of control over the torque just with the trigger. So I just tighten it right in. The thing you have to do now is you have, you're responsible for squaring the tap up to the part. So you got to kind of get it started, then you got to look at it from, from two directions. I guess you can see that. Yeah, look at it from, from two directions to make sure it's going in square. And just drive it in. Okay. All right. Well, that's basically power tapping. Uh, a lot of the purists hate it. I love it. I use it all the time. It works great. The only thing is, it's it's not really a beginner's technique. Um, like I said, before you try it in a project, get some scrap and drill a bunch of holes and tap them so you can you can get the feel for it. Once you get used to it, I think you'll you'll like it and you'll use it a lot, just like I do.